scarred by this audio shenanigans. Okay, cool. So that's my microphone active. That's nothing that's important. Discord has never changed, so that's awesome. Three in. Okay, so that's another thing um, that occurred when I was messing with the audio settings for like eight hours is that it, everywhere else, so in Discord, in OBS, in like a few video games, um, wherever I had um, custom audio settings, uh, it just flipped them off and just went straight to their whatever the default setting was, and so it did the same thing through and try to remind myself uh what was what was what was what mm. and just kind of re-reset those and just remind myself oh right that's not active <laughs> so um hear it oh. on my stream yet just gonna wait a little while longer until i hear my idiot self Oh, there I am. Okay. And I'm pretty sure you're out. So that's good. Say a thing just to make sure. I think also, uh, I don't know, when I was like joining this, it was saying that we're still doing the death night. Hopefully I'm sorry. What thing. was that? There was an there was the echo happening, but yes, you are um, being heard. So what cool. was that? that's when good. Uh, I think when I joined, it said that we we're still doing the death night. Oh, what? No, no, Maybe. that's not a thing. Stop it! Dang it! <laughs> <sighs> Demi, is there a hyphen between Demi and Lich, or is it just straight up Demi no. Lich? I think it's just one long thing, Demi Lich. And also, is it the Mandela effect that I always think that it's Lit Titch? No, I do that too. Well, I mean, I guess <laughs> it is the Mandela effect. Um, right. It just a skull. Skulk. It just a skull. Just it. <laughs> just. <sighs> well, you know, can't can't be perfect all the time. In any case, hello and welcome to another segment of some sort of talk show. Um, I am but a dumb technician, and joining with me today is on this side of the camera, because I flipped it, uh, even. <laughs> What's up? Um, last week, we did the Death Knight, um, colloquially titled as the Death Knit. Um, <laughs> this week, we are going into topics a little smaller. Um, the but much more powerful, the Demi-Ledge. If I even have the thing still up, sometimes my images kind of... Next stop? Nope. All right, last stop. Today's feature. Yeah, there he is. So they, they generically kind of look a little something like this. Uh, they're just a head that have been... Um, cultified and they've got I mean they're just ahead so they have to do everything they can with their arcane abilities to try to bluff about and intimidate and try to get people to do their bidding I don't actually know what a demi lich does like <laughs> <laughs> like are they I even are they even a villain or are they kind of a 
like a trap that an actual lich puts in and is just like, yes, Steven, you shall exist on this podium so that when adventurers come in, if they get by you, then A, you have failed me, and B, they will be weaker. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a <clears throat> a convergence that happens between different editions where they jump back and forth between what a demi lich is to where <clears throat> it is like what like in some uh, some edition, it is a lesser lich, one that is a mistake or one that has degraded and become less than what it could have been uh, or what it was. But in other ones, it is a better lich, something that has gone past the lich, the lichiness. So it's kind of it, it's weird uh, right now as it exists in um, in fifth edition. It is less than, but yeah, it's not always. At, yeah, because like stats wise, I mean they're just ahead. So yeah, of course they're going to be a lot less than a thing that actually has limbs and a staff. But um, looking at their abilities and what they can do, like they're a lot more relatively interesting than a, like a than like a full lich, um, and. I don't know. I tend to read too far into things, and so I always imagine that they're much more scary than an actual lich is. Because, like in my mind, an actual lich is just like it's basically what three point five wanted um, the the stronger dragons to become. It's just like you are wizard plus extra, you know, plus like three extra things. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the demi lich actually has like curses built in where it's like you start to wither away like every like every third round or something it's just like oh my god <laughs> i don't like this at all and now you're paralyzed and you're scared uh yeah, yeah but they've kind of like i think this this version of the lich has taken that role of like it is a it's lost all sense of like kind of humanity at this point uh even though it's supposed to be like still super smart which i like i really hate stats and D sometimes but it's like a more feral like uh i will suck souls and destroy stuff immediately the moment i see it whereas like a lich can do that but it has still a, sem uh, a semblance of i guess humanity um or at least like malevolent intent and uh like uh, planning and stuff, so it would probably want to fuck around with you more than just kill you. Whereas a demi lich has none of that left, and it's like kill, 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 kill. <laughs> He's uh, so, yeah. literally on his uh, say last legs, but uh, that's long gone. Um, mm -hmm. The at the very least, though, because it when you were um, when I was going through like my little rant on his abilities and stuff, not really rant, but what it sounded like um it reminded me that i believe it was in fourth edition or something that um they had this silly mechanic where he had uh these expendable like once per day because it's um once per day like curses or spells or something but they were like once per day because they were associated with the gems that were his that were their teeth so, so as they just kind of like expended their thing, there was this visual of like them getting like more and more just like gap toothed, and I was just like, "That's interesting," but that's the silliest way to have this like thing that has the keyword "lich" in it be around. It just it makes it so much it makes the fight so much sillier, even though your characters are probably dying <laughs> the first three rounds. And in like an early edition, like if you touched it, you died instantly. It just soaked you up. So this one is not the same, but it does have like a touch life drain attack thing where it heals itself and hurts you like really hard. So it's still the same thing, except they just took away the insta death thing because our fifth edition is made everybody tougher in a way, or at least more difficult to kill. At least outright. Definitely an older. I think it. 
Uh, I actually don't know, <laughs> but um, I do believe that it is an older creation and it's a more well thought out creation than the brain in a jar. <laughs> um, just in that it's been around longer. <laughs> but. Um... How do you like Warwitch? I mean, I guess you, you, you might talk about that once you start design, uh, pulling your artwork up. How do but... I like the. Wait, how did I like the full lich, or how did I? Well, or your demi lich, I guess. I did. Of like, do you like the convergence? Uh, do you like the like you know track B where it's lesser, or track A where it's more? I think it was flip flop. Um, when it uh, of like actual creations, because demi means half, it means less, but. Eh. Um, but it's, it's all around. Yeah, I. I like to imagine that the demi just refers to the fact that it's it's no long it no longer has a body and staff, um, but a lot of its magical power is still retained. So it lost half of its features, but it still retains like the dangerous half. Um, mm -hmm. I so again the demi lich kind of falls into that um, slayers category for me, in which there's like different. Um, there's different tiers, so, you know, there's, like, there's, um, f there's, like, Flanagan, Flanagan Jim Jam, who died in, like, you know, 1807, whatever the years are ticked off as, uh -huh. and he only really wanted to be immortal, you know, but basically he was this like fat Baron who didn't really do much. He wasn't that great of a spellcaster, you know? And so he just kind of persists as, you know, and he couldn't really have a great following. So he just kind of persists as a Demi Lich, not that strong, but the fact that he's now this talking skull on a throne, um, the people fear him and they don't really question his power too much. Like they've heard of, you know, things as powerful as this. And so they don't, you know, they just don't question it. Um, mm -hmm. especially when he throws, you know, not fire balls, but just little fire spouts at people and they go, Oh God, he could shoot fire. You know, villagers, what are you going to do? They hear rumors, they see magic and they go, Oh, that's what that must be. Um, and then there's like your mid tier stuff where it's just like, a wizard who didn't quite get all the way to like full lich and like something went wrong in the way you know he, he's still he's able to like polymorph stuff but he's not able to do like anti-magic field and all these other stuff you know so it's you know so he's he knows a little more but he's like stuck in a temple somewhere because something went wrong you know like that kind of thing and then there's like the boss level demi lich where that used to be a lich there was a party before that went through, thought they defeated the Lich, didn't. Now he's just a head, you know. So it's it's functionally this full Lich, but it's just a head. And now he has to kind of function as a Demi Lich. And he's just like, don't call me that or else I will end everything. And then summons Meteor Shower on your head <laughs> and does way too much D8s. D10s? D12s. <laughs> um but yeah, so that's why I don't usually write demi liches into my story because usually they're either a stepstone character or they're like a key character and they would require way too much writing for me as far as like background and what happens if the characters come into contact with this person. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a little yeah. So for me on my end, it's just a, it's just a little more complicated as far as like where do you like the liches or the demi lich to kind of slot in? Because their challenge rating means nothing to me <laughs> because of their because of their art their their character concept. I can move that that challenge rating like that, you know. Yeah. Um, Which when I was like looking around and like doing some research, I remember uh, like one of the web pages was like, "Do you also want to look at and." It like suggested some other things like, you know, do you want to look at a lich? Do you want to look at a flame skull? And like what you described of that like semi-magical baron that says that he's like a, this lich thing is like, or he could be a flame skull. That could be a thing. I think like, I think people uh, flame skulls give... aren't um, intelligent, right? I mean, like they, they can't like speak, right? They just kind of... Mah, 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 mah. 
same thing. I don't know if you would say that the like depending on the edition and how you look at it, I don't think you'd say that a a demi lich is intelligent. It is. Oh, yeah, I don't know. They don't really speak either. Yeah, they could be just like the remnant, like in one ver uh, envisionment of you know a kind of demi lich is. It is. Uh, a lich that has not been feeding their philantry uh, souls, and so it, the magic that's holding it together is falling apart. And so now it's just become a soul-hungry floating head thing that can't even fathom real spells or a full body and all of that until they absorb enough souls to get enough power to rebuild themselves completely, and then rebuild their own philantry. Uh, even though they've created these like sub philantries, or maybe even a better philantry, depending on how you want to look at of these like different gem bits, which is either like the teeth, the eyes, it could be other things. I read a thing that was like saying, like it could be like the discs of between the spinal cord or the uh, spine bits, which I don't know, fun stuff. But I was gonna um, say, I think they did like fourth edition, something that they did that was really genius, um, that doesn't get enough credit was the. Like what you were describing with your demi lich, like the stepping up of different things that like when you went to the entry on, you know, like on a simple level, like elf, they gave you like, here's a, here's an elf bad guy. That's an archer. Here's an elf bad guy. That's like, uh, like a, a fighter. And then here's one that's like five levels ahead. That is like a uh, general. And then here's one that's like 10 levels that that's ahead. That is like uh, an arch fay. And it was like a, a good way of thinking of like, oh, right, fighting monsters didn't have to be a, a linear, like you fight goblins in the morning, you fight orcs when you're strong, like <laughs> in the evening, and then in your latter ages, you fight liches. It's like, no, there could be a weaving back and forth. Yeah, as much as 4th edition gets a lot of flack, even from me on, a, on more than a common occasion, um... The one thing that it did do well is it taught um, developers and you know GMs and stuff like how you can take one monster concept and alter it in like um, I would uh, in some cases small ways just so that there's a large difference, but in other cases just change them so that their entire role almost changes. You know, so here's here's where they are if your characters are you know levels one through four. Here's where they're at, you know. Here's this same creature is just got very different stats now for when they're like eight and nine, and then, mm -hmm. you know, if your if your campaign calls for it, you know, the here's here's the boss version of this character. Um, I really like that in fourth edition. Uh, yeah, they did something really cool with the monsters and with the the player classes. That was like a little weird, but again, it was a good teaching like players and dms how to like set up things is that they started categorizing classes by their role in the team so you had your defenders which their main thing was that they would soak damage and, or like protect ward people from damage then you had your strikers which their main thing was to do damage but you know a rogue was a striker um but also a sorcerer was a striker because they just like rained fucking magic down until something died um but then they did the same thing on like the creature side of like they changed the words around sometimes a little but they had like you know they had their skirmishers they had their like uh brutes i think and they had like soldiers uh and then they like they did some cool things when you came to like a monster you were like here's a monster and here's it in its different roles so Here's what a goblin would look like as like a striker and a, a, stra a one that looked like a, a brute. And so you didn't have to just like, oh, goblins, they all they all have these shields. They all have these like crossbows. They all have these like maces done. Yeah, one um, earlier when you were talking about um, bringing up this kind of topic of, you know, their steps, it kind of I, I was kind of drifting off as to like where else a demi lich might appear and the easiest thing was like all right um fey and then mm. i and then that immediately um sparked the mission where um the dude at the 
the tavern with the hole in his floor. <laughs> I forget what that tavern's called. It's really famous. But anyways, um, he basically gives you, you know, the the hint as to where to go for um, where all these Thay are kind of like said to kind of go in and out of. And the thing that um, the thing that I thought of was like, there's, you know, there's one there's one arch lich, right? And then there's all these wizards of Thay that are around there, like also doing all these little necromantic things. And so um, the story hook is that um, these demi liches, because they're, you know, they're they are just kind of these. Without a language, they don't have a lot of interaction, so I would say that they are more of like a sentinel. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, um, the story goes is that. You know, so the Thay go around all these things, but there is one sort of promotional opportunity. <laughs> There's one upgrade where a wizard, if he thinks that he's ready enough, can try to make that step into lichdom. And so there is like this ritual or there's this trial that is being sought over, you know, seen over by the arch lich. And if that wizard fails in any way, it's a lot like how the drow kind of do stuff where if they fail, they get drydered. And if they succeed, then they get to they get to move on to the next step. So in this scenario, the dude get you know the dude oftentimes gets incinerated into just a skull, and then you know the art the you know the all the fair if anything resourceful so waste not <laughs> so they they'll take that and then they'll just kind of you know do their little things and kind of bring it back and now it's a demi lich and then they'll put it in one of their little chamber things and now it's the sentinel of that room. So, with that use, because I think my perception of why the Demi Lich is so boss worthy is because usually when I've seen it, it's um, it is always kind of the standalone thing. You know, it's like room filled with treasure, podium in the center, skull, crap ton of gems embedded into its face, and it's like go, <laughs> you know interact with the room trigger the skull and now they have to fight this challenge rating 18 thing you know and it feels like a boss um but in the context of it's in this room with all these like like you know in the austin powers movies where like you know you have all these people at like you know consoles working and then austin you know blows his way into the room and then they all go ah you know and there's just like one or two people that are just still standing there being like Ah, you know that's kind of what the demi lich is. You know, it's like all the all the weaker wizards and acolytes just kind of try to run as fast as they can out of the room, and then there's just the demi lich just starts to just rise in the center of the room, just goes, you know, fixes his gem eyes on the on the interlopers and just like, meh. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. so yeah, more of a guardian thing, and then that way it feels a lot less bossy. He does feel a lot more. Um, he does feel less than a lich in that scenario. Mm -hmm. And that would make me feel better if more stories incorporated that. But, you know, what are you going to do? It's a challenge rating 18. That can usually wipe out most people, <laughs> most parties um, by itself. I saw a couple of things that were like trying to point out that like that took the, the belief that like a demi lich is actually more. And so like a transcendence of like even needing a body like um and like you can take it both on like it's become so powerful and so malevolent or you can take it as like it's kind of started to realize that like immortality is not all it's chalked up to be especially in the sense of maintaining yourself as an like a humanoid that is just like no i can just be everything i still need a focusing thing of a head but that's cool i'll just do that bit and then like the rest is good and so it could be like a cool kind of thing. But they were pointing out there's like CR23 ones that is that's as powerful as like a Tarrasque. And they're like, you should think of this as powerful as a Tarrasque. There are so few like of these demi liches because they're so powerful. But I think that is that could be the higher one. There's all those lesser ones that they're failures, but then there's these other ones that are you know, they're somewhat transcendent that they they don't even need. Yeah, CR23 is a Sararak, who's one of, like, the five arch liches <laughs> that exist in the world. Um, I just thought of another kind of story that I want to write for the Demi Lich, but um, I want to get, I want to move on. <laughs> so, um, I think, I think I'm up first. So, um, yes, so... 
while you went with the more like CR23 thing, I wanted to focus more on just like the the basic setup of how one might encounter a, a demi lich. So, um shout out to a lot of different artists on Thingiverse who have many different variants of the skull. Um I recommend that if you are either super uninspired or you just don't have the time, you know, Thingiverse, Turbo Squid, uh there's one other website that I kind of forgot right now, but um Yeah, there's there's a bunch of different people who have a bunch of different things. This model was amazing in the sense that um the teeth are separate from the actual um cranium and the jawbone. And the jawbone is separate as well. The jawbone, this version is not, I believe. Um, huh. There are other versions where you can separate them for like anatomical study type stuff like that. But I got super excited when I found out that the teeth are separate because I have plans for that later. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I was a little embarrassed that I had to actually look at a tutorial for how to make diamond. Um, just that generic, like, princess cut sort of shape. Those are really fancy. And there's, like, yeah. there's specific ways to do it because there are, like, uh, like with real diamonds, how you cut it so that it becomes the, the, the standard, this looks beautiful way. But then there's, like, a lot of, like, rough cut ones that, like, you kind of do need to have a little bit of logic on how it works. Um, but at the same time, it's like, it's not, not exactly clear cut depending on like how you perceive patterns and natural yeah, it's things, weird, but it turned out well. Yeah. It's weird. Cause when I was, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if it went fast enough, but um, you know, I was kind of browsing through my shapes, you know, so I can make a cube subdivide that and it kind of gets some faces on it, but um, I didn't know how to get that diamond shape, and so I looked around at a couple at a couple of other people, and um, they were all like, "Yeah, man, cylinder is the way to go." And I was like, "I am, I am uncreative to the point where I would have never thought of cylinder <laughs> to get to get a diamond shape, like <laughs> cone maybe, like an upside down cone, and then like pop it out, but." Whatever, we got there. This is why there are other people to bounce ideas off of. Mm -hmm. Um And then I just kinda I just kinda went with the flow and so they, they suggested a um a glass shader and there's a part of me that agrees because there's an inherent sort of um that reflective sort of surface. So what you see reflected in there is technically what's called the HDRI, which is just the world <laughs> that's supposedly in my surrounding my area. Can't see that in this in this view mode, but um, I think it looks okay. But I've gotten in what I would consider more satisfying, like transparent glass window pane kind of effects. From just doing the standard um, BDSF. <laughs> um, so, yeah, basically, I just quickly ran through why I was so excited that the teeth were separate, is because I can make them whatever I want them to be. So, in this case, I give him two little gold. Um, it's not an incisor. One of those is a canine, and the other one is a... It starts with an M, I think, but I don't care enough about dentistry to really figure that out <laughs> right now. Um, the initial idea here was to give him, like, emerald eyebrows, just so that he had more character. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really didn't, I, it really didn't sit with me. Like while I was doing the teeth, I kept looking up at the eyes and just being like, it's, it's a little too surprised smiley. Um, and the entire time I was doing this, I kept flashing back to the asshole lush skull 
that or the skeleton that um was in the last unicorn mm-hmm. and it's weird how in all of that film the bull did not scare me as much as that skeleton did it was just so creepy and the fact that there was such a long interaction with it was just this unsettlingness um but it had more emotion in it despite being this solid skull because of the effects of animation in the sense that you can move you know the upper portions of its skull to kind of like morph kind of like putty can't do that here (laughs) i mean i can do that here didn't want to do that here because i wasn't going to actually animate a lot of stuff so i was just like you know what um i'll kind of do a like dio de la muerte kind of thing and um put put some external um facial features on them so and i couldn't really get i at the time i didn't really think about how i would do the emerald so i just made it gold so it's like he has two gold teeth um two what are supposed to be diamond eyes and then like a gold leaf sort of um eyebrow in in beds because i always think that that would be really cool in a campaign of these characters coming in and not having the demi lich allowing the demi lich to actually speak so that when the characters start rummaging through the treasure room um the demi lich starts to like kind of speak up and kind of like warn them about stuff but not really give off that he's a demi lich just yet just Mm. like maybe he's just an enchanted skull or something just like taunt them and just be like are you sure you want to touch that the last person who touched that was you know turned into a squirrel you know just kind of like chide them and make them like think twice about like picking up certain things in the room um and then if ever they got violent then it's like all right level eights welcome to the room of challenge of challenge rating 18 (laughs) um but just so that you know just to give him it's mostly eyebrows, you know, just to give him something that's just like, um, he gives you a stern look, you know, it's like, how do you, how do you narrate that without having, you know, any sort of ability to express the rate of teeth chatter? Ugh. Um, I start to get a little piratey here, like... Yeah, because whenever you see pirate treasure, like, there's some really excessive accessories that they put on their, like, prizes. <laughs> or, like, what people end up, like, taking from a room. So, like, you'll see a skull and it's got, like, you know, mm. gold coins in its eyes and it's got gems for teeth and it's got gold, you know, it's gold painted with all these, like, you know, war markings, and then it's got, like, emeralds embedded in its cheekbones, and you're just like, Jesus. What what pirate took the time to do this? <laughs> it's funny. I, I, it was, I think it was in Game of Thrones. Um, in one of the books, one of the latter ones, uh, where somebody starts hiding with, like, a mercenary group and is, like, traveling with them. But, like, part of what they were noting and talking about was just, like, how mercenaries carry themselves. And, like, in general, mercenaries don't have that much money. Uh, But they tend to wear their, to, like, to make themselves seem important, uh, as well as to have a way to carry money with them. Uh, They wear really garish things. They have, like, they were they'd be the kind of people that would wear too many rings or would embed jewels into like outfits and stuff. Not only to like just mark that they're, they've been successful at what they did, but also whenever they need to, as they're traveling, they're just like, here, I'll trade you. Take this ring. You give me that like kind of business. Whereas like everyone else is just like, they know they're rich. They've got like bolts somewhere, but a mercenary group can't really have bolts places. uh, Nor could you, um, nor would you like need to show off that you're rich because just like I own the land what else do you need to know I decided to make the skull black not because uh, to in like initiate some sort of like evil intention but like um, by the time I got to that texturing point I was really tired of seeing like a wow. white skull or a somewhat like tarnished with time sort of like tan skull 
Mm. Um, and then my mind shifted over to Fern Gully's villain. Um, I think his name was Nexus, but um, his final form was kind of this like large skeletal f- figure with like you know tar black you know skeletal hands and skull and stuff and um that really stuck with me so i kind of wanted to throw that here because it was like sure i mean it's this dude who's gone through some dark arts and stuff so why not have his his bones bleached in in the color of you know just as a side effect Mm -hmm. Uh, plus it lets the gold kind of pop out a little more but it had the unintended the unforeseen effect of the diamonds in his eyes now can't really be seen because it's a it's a reflective surface so it's a it's a relatively black world in a black frame and you've got this cl- this what's supposed to be this clear sort of material so it's like it yeah of course it's going to disappear <laughs> so mm-hmm. i was kind of like damn it um and those are supposed to be sapphires in his cheekbone but um the same sort of problem happened in the sense that it um kind of absorbed some of the properties of the skull so it didn't get the the glassy sort of texture it kind of became this um more opaque just sort of blue so it's almost like a blue metal that's like embedded like that's what it looks like it's a blue metal like a blue mm. metal rivet <laughs> um so that was kind of disappointing that it turned out that way then there's supposed to be an emerald tooth in there as well and that didn't come out as great because it went from the diamond texture and then the more that i kind of messed with it the more metallic it came so then it sort of started to remind me of the mardi gras beads that you'd get so he just has a green mardi gras bead as a tooth and (laughs) i kind of i was like you know what I'm not in the right mindset to keep fiddling with all these little color swatches, so I'm just going to kind of keep moving on and hope that I get to a point where I'm happy with it. I feel like that's something worth noting. Uh, I mean, I'm not a kind to uh, enjoy jewels and things, but, like, really, this is life, people. Most of the lighting isn't good to show off your jewels, nor does it look all that interesting from afar. Like, I think they're overrated but mostly because of people uh people fixating on things well i also knew that i wanted to do from the very beginning i wanted to do some effect of what's happening right now on screen and i knew that because it's a particle simulation that i'm going to hit that play button more than 15 times so Mm -hmm. um i didn't want to spend you know another 40 minutes on you know color swatching again i just wanted to get to the next part that i knew was going to take another like 52 minutes um because right off the bat the minute that i hit the play button for the first time these particles don't cooperate the way that i was sort of advertised that they were going to cooperate. They're supposed to sort of a, be attracted to and then be guided along the the curves, those mm-hmm. little spirals that I put in there. But yeah. somehow the cl- they, they are repelled from the closest guideline that they're near and they gravitate toward the furthest guideline that <laughs> <laughs> that that's a way so where the curves go in one in one sort of um spiral they actually form the particles actually travel in the opposite spiral so ultimately <laughs> i wasn't angry that i wasn't angry enough that they um that they were doing that as long as they were doing some version of what i was trying to accomplish i was like i'm just gonna leave it I'm I'm not going to touch those properties. They're at least doing some version of what I want. <laughs> mm. um, How weird. Computer. Yeah. Cuz this is kind of the this is kind of the activation stage. So they come, th- you know, so they open the door and they see that what is the treasure room should be empty and there's just this skull on a on a podium stone door slides down shutting them in and then suddenly this magic sort of comes up and does all this stuff 
So if you notice, my workspace is blank <laughs> because I tried to change the color of, you know, I forget what, what it was that I was trying to change, but it was definitely a color thing. And all I wanted to do was, uh, <laughs> what was it? You're but so in any case, though. but in any case, for some reason, that was that was too much. Usually, when I when I get a blender crash or something, it's um, it's because I I I I'm trying to render a lot of different polygonal faces, and mm -hmm. I hit the render button, and the processing amount is just like. Uh, uh it's too heavy and blender just drops it and goes not my problem bro um, <laughs> so this is what so when it did that i was so i was so surprised because all it was was just moving like a number from like 0.72 to like 0.80 or something and the program was just like nah <laughs> not gonna do it tonight um <laughs> And what was even more surprising was that then I opened up the program just to see if, like, the file was still, like, intact. And it didn't, it, it showed up exactly the way it was. So it it, it remembered my, my formatting. And um, mm -hmm. if you notice, like, I had, like, two windows on one side and then one main work window. And I had all of that set up after I had imported the skull into the scene. Mm hmm so it remembered that I had that format, but it didn't remember that I had the assets there. And so I was like, that's weird. So I went up to file and it had this little section where it was like, um, recover. And I was like, oh, awesome. Like, maybe I could do that. Um, hit recover. It was like last, um, last project. I was like, yes, do it, do it. And it opened up nothing. <laughs> so I was like, I hate everything. I hate I hate right now all the things I hate um but yeah that is so this is the closest as I as I mentioned in my video this is the closest approximation of what my finished product would have been the spheres on the end would have been invisible because I checked a box that in the final render you it wouldn't have been rendered um I was <laughs> the trapezoid that's what it was um I was trying to make that into like a clay color texture mm. <laughs> and it just and it just died on me that's a six-sided figure that's not even messing with the colors on the skull anymore <laughs> i was trying to mess with the with the color agents on a six-sided figure and it, the it bloody just goes nope <laughs> um you know whatever uh but in, in any case so in that scene it's the kind of thing where you know they come in there and all they see is this is this skull with all these with all this shit embedded in its face, and they go like, "What's going on?" They start looking around at the walls and stuff, and then the stone doors on either side of the room just go, Pfft. and then like s like willow like willow wisps or like soul spheres kind of start to like seep out of the ground and just like envelop the skull as the skull like rises higher in the air and then. With a cackle, it lets out a vile curse or something, or it does a cloud of dust, and everyone rolls initiative. <laughs> so yeah, that's um, you know, that's my demi lich. I didn't quite get there, but um, close enough. Just kind of tripped right before the finish line. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> There already is. I like that I had a story this time, or that it was more of like embedded with the scene and story. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean that's that's what that's what I kind of love and hate about. Well, what I love about having a pre-made asset is that I can get to those points where I can just add the detail that I really want, and then I can have more fun kind of thinking of like the story which then makes me add more detail to the scene because before i wasn't going to have a podium in there but then i was like all right i mean it's not just going to be sitting on the floor and if it's floating in the air then it's not going to be a surprise round so mm -hmm. you know what are we going to do um yeah so i just kind of wish i got my lighting 
a little better. I thought that the particles, because I made the particles um, emissive, so I thought that they would have added more sort of a greenish, like, evil the tone part. to the room. But um didn't really work out that way, because I still don't fully understand how, like, emissive textures work. Mm. One day, one day we'll get there. Um, <clears throat> so that brings us to your go at the Demi Lich. Uh, is it? Ah, sh -sh -sh -ah. <laughs> Mine, I was, um, I was kind of inspired by something that. Like when as I was reading through somebody that was on a rant about demi liches and how they want them to exist, and then they put together a uh, a little like uh, roll your uh, roll up your own demi lich kind of thing, uh, and it had like some different things of like what's its origin, what kind of skull is it, you know, what's its blah 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 blah. Um, but it was kind of cool that it, it it did something that I was already thinking that I was gonna do is that. I've already taken life drawing uh, a variety of times. But in high school, I took anatomy just because I wanted to get better at life drawing because they don't offer life drawing in high school. Um, so, like, human skulls were kind of boring to me. And as a weird little, like, side note, a Sarac is apparently a Cambian. Like, and, like, the horns that you see on, like, his thing isn't just, like, a headdress for the most part. Like, or what? are, like, I don't know, could be not his headdress. Which is kind of neat and interesting. But I, I was already thinking that I wanted to do a different kind of skull. And then one of the ones that like stood out to me on that person's list, but in general I thought was kind of interesting, was a slod. Um, which is like something we, <laughs> we're going to get to super late in this. But they're like a creatures that live in this chaotic realm of like limbo that is like churning messiness of all elements and things flying around in utter chaos um and they're one of the like the, the creatures that live there one of the most like dangerous and they're like these frog toad things um so i got to make a frog skull but i wanted to really play around and have have them fighting uh and like existing in the realm of chaos and flying around so the very last thing that I actually put in there is that demi lich. Like what you're going to see me drawing, I think now is you're seeing me draw another of the denizens of limbo uh, or of the chaos, which is the githerzai or the githzerai, and they are psychic human things that were a long time ago made made from once humans from the, or something that was like humans, from the, the Illithids, or the Mind Flayers. Uh, but when they escaped, they wouldn't hid in this chaos realm and use their psychic abilities to, like, try to bring order to at least their area. They're like these monk things, so, I don't know. So I just drew up this scene of the Gitzerai fighting with a uh, a slod skull demi lich. Yeah, that was one of the stories that I was um, conceiving of that I didn't really want to go too much into, but it's um, it's just the idea that you can um, take any skull and basically ritualistically make it into a demi lich to like just be a be a dick or to guard you know to to guard <laughs> your stuff. So the story idea is. Um, for a more general sort of just use, all the heads in a graveyard are being taken and everyone in that village is being really disturbed. And so the, you know, the adventurers come in and they're like, hey, so if you need some work, we have a really disturbing thing in our graveyard happening. Can you like look into that? And then they look and it's just this, eventually it's just going to be this room that's, or multiple rooms, depending on how the DM wants to put it out, that's just filled with demi, like, not fully powered demi liches because it's a human necromancer type of a thing so he's not that powerful mm -hmm. but it's like this is getting you ready for the demi for the real demi lich <laughs> this is how they function mm -hmm. um but the real the this the real story that um kind of came up in my head was that a noble or something had his head taken 
as kind of like a dick move by like a archlich or something and you have to go and retrieve it but the adventurers find out that his head is now being used as a demi lich to guard one of the archlich's like hideouts and so mm. the adventurers have to be kind of careful to like destroy the gems but not the skull itself because they have to return the skull to the noble who's mm. kind of a minor who at this point is kind of a minor lich like he can live as an undead and still rule his, his area but um yeah so there there's an opportunity for like you get bonuses for returning the head intact or you kind of just complete the mission because you defeated the arch lich and i guess you put the noble to rest so the people are kind of happy but they're kind of upset that you lost them a noble <laughs> Uh -huh. I, like I, I think it's an interesting thing that we had talked about uh, on some other things as a like a sometimes what is scariest about a character is the fact that they exist in this magical world where they can be resurrected and like recreated and so like it isn't an entirely impossible thing that like yeah this ruler is going to rule a long time and who cares if he died because we can just if we can just get the head back and we can rebuild him yeah yeah because just because a thing has the evil tag on it doesn't mean that they're you know they're they're immediately eliminatable <laughs> um like they can still rule with relative justice it's just not justice that you might agree with um <laughs> So I, I I had a couple questions. Um, one, uh, the sort of lightning effects and stuff. Um, is there is there like a was there a conscious effort to try to make those like more illuminated, or is that just sort of a of a byproduct of the of the background and medium that you used? Uh, more illuminated than what than like things that we're looking at, or so yeah, like one of the one of the kind of evil things about like lightning and depicting lightning in a scene is kind of making it sort of luminous and not just kind of like this white crack in your in your in your uh, piece and... oh no i definitely tried to make certain parts have a sense of luminosity but uh, like there is like a glow to it that i kind of worked with um but yeah i did have to like break it apart into like um like i you know I, you saw me like paint together all the, like the really dark brown and then i erased out us uh, like the dark brown to reveal that like lighter brown and then i went in with a white with the the whitest uh one and like added some white in there to give it a little bit more of a glow and pop and then tell us a little bit about, and you may not have thought about this, but um, think of it now. Um, tell us a little bit about the story, about what's going on here. Is the red mist stuff that the Demi Lich already possessed and is now just bringing bringing to force? Or is it he is, is he using the wounds of the Githers eye uh, <laughs> to um, sort of become his weapon? Uh, I just wanted to give it a little bit more of a power sort of thing. Um, but I was imagining it like this is like a uh, remnants of kind of itself. Uh, part of what I what I thought was interesting is this idea of like, that like at least this Demi-Lich. This Demi-Lich used to be a Lich. And it had been uh destroyed in some capacity like partially destroyed but it's like philanthropy was like destroyed uh and it hadn't been able to like consume souls put it in its philanthropy and like rebuild itself but it's been slowly degrading and so it's in this like st uh, state of like trying to rebuild itself and so this is just like blood energy soul things that it had been ripping from other stuff and building building up that eventually it would try to rebuild its like lichy body and go about being a full lich, but like periodically, um, you get these like uh, this like kind of group of githzerai uh, that have been fighting and trying to like dismantle this lich, um, I uh, keep finding it. <laughs> I guess. 
<laughs> that would be a cool that would be a cool storyline if like it um it started off as just like a cursed gem and then the more gems that kind of come together and then it's like then there's a skull that's eventually um a, a, attained and now the the demiolich can now go around and like start to kill people and like um it's very like um mummy reminiscent and mm-hmm. then as it kills more and more people it kind of gets more more appendages and stuff and then eventually it's just a lich now if the if the adventuring party like lets it go on for too long it's just now a full lich so now it's no longer cr18 it's now a cr20 <laughs> good luck yeah i liked this idea and i've been thinking about like these creatures and like multi-generational or multi-party like quests I like my party, like they dealt with, you know, the lich's philanthropy. This other party, they actually fought the lich. But then another party further along had to like go find it in its demi lich form and like really finish it. Uh, which I thought was like kind of a, a cool, neat, strange sort of sort of thing. The other thing that I wanna I wanna point out that's really sort of um understated in this thing but it's like a really cool focal point is the fact that it's that the that the gith creature is using a psionic shield like ability (laughs) yeah i I had to kind of like look i had to like look a little closer because i was originally looking at like the little like blood claws (laughs) that are kind of like little like kind of little down there i was Mm -hmm. like what the heck is that? And I was like, oh, that's cool. That's that's a little cooler. But it's like, oh, God, defense. Yeah, which I think, like, I don't know, this was, like, in one of those moments of it's, like, howling or other stuff. And I don't know how it works, because there's, like, there's a lot of back and forth about how, like, arcane and psionic things deal with each other and how those magics work or don't work against each other. So I think, like, actually a um like uh get psionic powers might be actually pretty effective versus like the arcane powers that a demi lich or lich would actually use because they have i don't know i played one i, I think i might have even fought a version of a serac in a one shot that somebody put together in like a happy kind of thing and i was pissed it was the most, I was so annoyed because I, I think I was the only spellcaster. And this is one of the few times I've ever played a spellcaster. <laughs> and like everything was immune to magic. And we get to the final room and I do my epic kind of stuff and it's like immune to it. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to go sit in the other room. Have fun <laughs> fighting a lit, guys. Like, <laughs> I was like, there was a lot of moments where like we had this one and I thought I had it because like I built my character as this like thunder and lightning character. And we go to this room, and there's these, like, flying swords. And I'm like, sweet. Fuck that shit. I go in there, and I shatter the entire room. And it was like, it's immune to it. I'm like, well, screw it. I'm going to sit in the other room, you guys. I've got nothing. And then we fought some other thing that, like, I think they're yellow ochres. Like, a, a like gel things. And so... I shoot lightning and it like grows and restores. I'm like, well, that sucks. Good thing I have a scimitar. So I cut it with the scimitar. Slashing damage splits it into two. So now there's two of them. (laughs) I'm used to it. I'm used to it. It's my fault for like being very singular in how I built my character. But it was just like, I I did nothing here, you guys. This sucked. Yeah, um, I have been delving into um, uh, Critical Role's like Blood Hunter offshoot, <laughs> and I was actually caught off guard um, la- uh, last Friday because I found out that they updated the class on D and D Beyond. So now there's um, in the character that I currently have, there's a little parenthesis that says archived. So my my character has all these things that don't exist anymore. Yeah. And if I look and if I look through it's um like if I go through and try to change those, um I still see the old selection, but I don't get to see the new selection and I was just like, "Oh, I wonder if that's cuz it's just it's got the archive tag on it." 
And so I go and I try to create, I recreate that character and I've got all the new selection now. And I was just kind of like, oh man, because I want I, I found this out because I wanted to change one of my abilities. Um, one of my things is if a spellcaster targets me with a spell that requires an attack roll, um, I can impose disadvantage on that um, to up to a certain point. And because mm. um, my, my, my entire character concept was this anti-mage you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to avoid it as best I can until I can get up in your face and then you're going to have a bunch of steel and fists in your, you know, in your rib cage. Um, <laughs> but nothing was attacking me, but nothing was attacking me with attack spells. It was always, it was always an AOE of some kind. Yeah. And so I just got really kind of pissed off at that and so i was like i'm, I'm gonna change it because there is that ability also in the old selection mm -hmm. now that they've updated it none of those exist <laughs> so i was like oh god what am i gonna do now my anti-mage idea is basically binned but there is one um there is one ability that i i've accepted so they kept the blood puppet they kept you know some of the other things but one of the one of the ones that um exists now that i really liked is um as a bonus action i think i can um or it might be a reaction anyways i yeah. select the dude and there's no i don't i don't it didn't i didn't read that there was a save or anything it just happens um the i can remove a um i can remove a resistance or if i take some if i take some of my if i bleed myself a little bit i can remove an invulnerability to, for the next attack so oh, for so, so for unfortunate people like you who have like i am the lightning god and then just in a room full of just like inanimate objects that just don't take lightning damage um I could just like you know we could just be frustrated through like the first kind of like minions and like the brutes, but then like you know there's like the main guy and I'm just like all right this is the dude, get him, <laughs> you know just kind of remove that shield for one attack and just like lots of damage. Yeah. Um, is my new goal cool. now? <laughs> there was this, a feat that like uh, it kills me because I think I gave it to this character too. I was just, like. Anytime you do damage with a specific type of damage, you can re-roll to do more. Uh, and it's just like uh, creatures with resistance now like take the full damage of it. But there's like a little point that says if a creature is immune to it, they're still immune to it. And it's like, I understand kind of why. But it was just like, couldn't... I mean, I think they... I would be completely fine as a DM to say, like, yeah, they get to feel for once what fire feels like. Still, they have <laughs> resistance to it, so it's not that bad and you didn't do that great, but since you have this extra feat that makes your shit more powerful than everyone else's, that's a good moment of, like, ah, this is what that feels like? This is terrible! Like, I was like, yeah, you don't even know. You don't even know. Yeah. But it's, for me, it's very rare in D&D to find, like, um, team synergy like abilities and spells so the minute that i saw that i was just like yes i could finally just be like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna do a thing and then because i know that steve or i mean steve could maybe hold his attack but like one of the spell casters could just like you know do their special thing that has been frustrating them because you know everything's resistant and immune so far and just like get a get a large head you know um, head start on this fight because now they're suddenly you know they're suddenly vulnerable to this to to this um, ability mm -hmm. so hopefully it works out because uh, yeah um, to try to tie it back to the demi lich um, they also have a lot of frustrating um, like resistances and immunities one of them is <laughs> That would be so. That would be so funny if it's um if I'm just like, you're vulnerable now, and the next person that goes up there and decides to you know I'm gonna ignore Tyler and just go up there and just do my attack um stuns him or like makes him go prone because <laughs> it is a floating skull so just <laughs> um 
But yeah, also, like, a lot of things are, like, it, at very early levels, there's a lot of monsters that are immune to poison. Um, and, you know, it's kind of sad because poison, like, is so rarely used for that fact. You know, it's just like, why am I going to take this when almost 40% of the monster manual is immune to my to this ability at that point. <laughs> um, the Demulage being one of them. Necrotic Poison Psychic Damage. Um, and there's a lot of high damage psychic abilities too, so that would be a really good one to just be like, you know, I impose my, my blood ability upon you and now you are able to take psychic damage, so go suck my mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is, like, a total, I feel like it's a valid thing on, like, a variety of different um, tactics style, like, video games of, like, yeah, I have this one character. It doesn't do damage. It just curses things. It makes people <laughs> weep the fire. And then the rest of the team, they just bring the fire. <laughs> like, and that would feel really good. And, it, like, it can happen. There are spells like that in D&D, &D, but there's not a ton of them. And not a ton of them through different classes that, like, you could help each other out but it's kind of it'd be neat i'd love to like this i'd love to see this story uh unfold between these like these different demi liches and like the things that are trying to hunt them or deal with them yeah especially now with um the updates to certain classes because a lot of them feel a lot more witchery they're a lot more like um monster huntery you know in the sense of like it's not just like he does a thing and i resist it or you know he does a thing and then i'm just gonna kind of dodge out of the way and i'm gonna do something back at it it's like i remove your protection or like i you know i'm able to actually like understand what your footprint looks like and now you i can uh you can forever never lose me you know like you could run away but i'm going to find you in like a day or two <laughs> mm. It's really cool. Um, so that is our time for this week. I did want to kind of go into um, some more details as to like um, why you omitted um, certain ritualistic stuff like the gems and teeth or eye sockets. But I think I blood magic. I what? there's like teeth that are shinier than the other teeth but yeah. it's tiny. It's, it's difficult in your medium <laughs> to see yeah. that um but i also accept blood magic as like an acceptable uh substitute just having these <laughs> blood just these blood pools just like around his pupils kind of re further reminds me of the um last unicorn skeleton <laughs> not blood pools it was just red to kind of indicate sort of a rage and fanaticism but <clears throat> you know you can make inferences so with that um enough pandering that is the all the time that we have for this instance of some sort of talk show uh join us next week for uh i think it's our first category so demons <laughs> um so we were going with doing one dumb version and then like one apex version then impossible we talked about like maybe a demon lord but i don't know we've got uh, we might break it up into a couple of weeks of drawing different kinds of demons at different power levels. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> we have at least like two days to kind of hash out details a little more, like those little emergency hashings before we finally get down to uh, concrete. All right, this is what we're doing. <laughs> so, um, thank you for joining and we hope to see you next week please uh if you are watching this kind of late and you're like hey what is this this is kind of interesting um i do try to post these up on youtube every monday links is down below uh there's a little like youtube thing 
And um, you can catch even on Instagram and other doobly doos if you, I don't know, like if you're creepy and you want to like Google his name. <laughs> um, and on that note, uh, once again, thank you for tuning in and goodbye. Bye.